The time is 6.30, and a quorum being present, I call this meeting to order. First item on the agenda is the approval of minutes. Um, so we have um, meeting minutes from May 1st and May 22nd, uh, June 5th and June 26th, July 17th, August 14th, and September 9th. Uh, is there any um, discussion on those meeting minutes? Just a correction, September 4th for that last one. Oh, September 4th. And if there's no discussion, could I have a motion to approve those minutes? I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Aye. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, all right. Next item is agenda item A, request for a certificate of compliance for Peter Collins, 135 Pleasant Street, Assessor's Map 47, Lot 40. Could you just introduce yourself for the record and then the floor is yours. So, certainly, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commission uh, Board Members. Uh, Peter Collins, representing um, the town of Tewksbury, uh, town manager for the Tewksbury Elementary School that was just constructed at 139 Pleasant Street. Uh, we had the order of conditions that was issued back in 2020, June of 2020. So we have completed the project. We've gone through all the orders of conditions. We've submitted them onto the conservation officer, and we've had uh, sign-offs and affidavits, as-built conditions, and things of that nature in, in, um, in compliance, what we feel with the orders of conditions, and we're looking for a certificate of compliance this evening. All right, thank you very much. Um, is there any discussion from the commission? It seems pretty straightforward. This is a big project, but... I've driven by it a few times. It looks pretty good. I've driven through the, yeah. the parking lot. And yeah, it's, I think it came out well. Yes, yeah. it did. So, um, All right. Um, if there's no discussion, then could I have a motion to approve the, um, the certificate of, of compliance? I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Have a good evening. All right. Agenda item B, request for certificate, certificate of compliance for Troy Stearns, 21st Assessor's Map 81, Lot 192. Could you please introduce yourself for the record and then the floor is yours. Sure. Uh, Jim Hanley, Civil Design Consultants. Uh, we have a, I think we have three or four uh, requests for COCs tonight. Uh, the first of which is uh, 21st Street. So 21st Street was a, uh, is a single family residential house. The house was built. We uh, pr um, filed a notice of intent application and got an order of conditions to do some basic landscaping in the backyard uh, within the 100 foot buffer. Um, landscaping has been completed. The lot is stable. We did a site walk with uh, Abigail and uh, provided a as built as well as the request for the certificate of compliance. So uh, if there's any questions, I'll try to answer them for you. All right. Any discussion uh, from the commission? Nope. Done. Yeah, this is uh, just a review. This is the one that we were concerned about the actual property lines, but they Correct. Yeah. 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 It was up against the paper street. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That, but but they the submitted one. all the paperwork Correct. to prove that they yep. had the legal right to do all that. Correct. Stuff. Yep. All right. Um, all right. So if there's no discussion on this, could I have a motion to approve? I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Thanks. Agenda item C, request for certificate of compliance for Jane, Jamie's uh, Williamson, 44 California Road, Assessor's Map 82, Lot 19. Could you please introduce yourself to the record and then the floor is yours. James Williamson, asking for a certificate of compliance for 44 California Road, a project we've been working on for a while. Um, we met all the standards of the order of conditions, I'm trying to wrap up the project. I don't know if you guys have any questions. All right. Seems pretty straightforward. Okay. 
Did you have some erosion controls that failed, but you fixed them? Or? Yeah, we had a spot in the back. Um, obviously, the water got pretty high. Um, I can't remember the exact month, maybe like sometime between December and February. And uh, some of the silt fence gave out. We put the silt fence back up. There was some erosion that had led into um, past the silt fence. It was still within the buffer zone. Uh, but we did remove that debris, uh, well, wash out, and we planted native seed per Abigail's request. And then she did a site visit. So, so. Yeah, the site visit was good. Yeah, yep. Okay. All right. Um, any discussion on this request from the commission? Nope. Not hearing any. Could I have a motion? to approve uh, this certi certificate of compliance. I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, votes aye as well. Thank you very much. Thanks guys, have a good one. <coughs> and item D, request for certificate of compliance for Troy Stearns, 165 Livingston Street, assesses map 86, lot 55. Could you please introduce your so for the record, and then the floor is yours. Sure. Uh, Jim Hanley, Civil Design Consultants. Um, again, this is a request for a certificate of compliance. Uh, just to kind of give you the overview, this is uh, over by the Tewksbury Country Club off of Livingston Street, single family residence. Um, we filed for and obtained an <clears throat> order of conditions. I think it was probably two years ago, give or take. Um, the, the only thing that made this somewhat unique was that it's within the floodplain, um, within the 100-foot floodplain. So um, we had to monitor uh, uh, grades during construction. Uh, we did an as-built uh, plan. Uh, the developer actually kept everything a little bit lower than what was um, proposed and approved on the plan. So there's actually an increase in the flood storage on the property in this area. Um, again, we, we uh, provided the request for the COC. Uh, we did a site walk. Uh, I have a letter, some pictures, some floodplain calcs, and an as-built plan, uh, but it has been constructed in substantial compliance with the approvals. Right. Is there any discussion on this application? I'm good. If there's no further discussion, could I have a motion to approve? We'll make a motion to approve the certificate of compliance. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye as well. Thank Great. you very much. Thank you. Agenda item E, request for certificate of compliance for William Hannafin, 141 East Candace uh, Road, Assessor's Map, 51, Lot 72. <coughs> Please introduce yourself for the record and then the floor is yours. Good evening. My name is Bill Hannafit. I live at 141 Eastgate Road. Um, I purchased the property in 2006 off, the, off of the original owner. Um, I'm in the process right now of selling the house and the buyer's council end up, ended up seeing that there wasn't a certificate of compliance that was recorded. So um, that's the reason why I'm here. Um, I'm not near, uh, my understanding is I'm not near a, a wetlands area to begin with. I'm, I'm beyond 100 feet. There was a site visit out to there. Um, so I'm just trying to get the paperwork so I can make it, make it legal, I guess, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, yeah. whatever the right thing is. So you can sell it. So I can sell it is, right. is yeah. that's kind of important. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, because this is part of a larger subdivision, originally part of a So yes, the, uh, the, the developer had put in three houses, my, All right. my house and two others. Mm -hmm. One of those two others actually sold in 2015 and had the same issue. Mm -hmm. He had to come before the board and, 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 and get the certificate. Yeah. I have that issue. I assume the third person there is going to have if, the issue. Yeah, if they so, haven't done this, then they'll probably have I, to. Um, it doesn't really matter for you, but I, I think we're, Tewksbury's getting better at uh, this, so it doesn't happen as often, but yeah. you know, it, it, it happens occasionally, and we sure. have to you know, deal with the uh, you know, uh, uh, ratifying or approving the, uh, it's not really a partial um, certificate, but it's just a certificate for a portion of the property. 
Am I correct in that statement? Um, the 2015 um, property 100 Eastgate, they got a partial certificate because it's a part of the original All right. um, order. All right, so the, the, I'm going to request a motion, but it, it's going to be the same thing. Yeah. Um, it'll, you'll, you'll be all set to... Uh, yeah. when, to it, when the uh, lawyer... I talked to the lawyer, actually, that did the 2015 closing, and uh, I asked him why I didn't do the other two houses. He says, well, he was being paid by the guy at one yeah. hundred. <laughs> so I said, thank you. Yeah. Um, and there's... For only three houses, I mean, it probably would have made sense, but there's other yeah. divisions that are, you know... 50 houses, yeah. it, it, it gets difficult to do all of those. Um, all right, is there any uh, discussion from the commission on this agenda item? Seems pretty straightforward. Um, if there's no discussion, could I have a motion to approve as discussed at this meeting? I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, this is the first of two that look very identical. Uh, agenda item F, request for a certificate of compliance for Richard Cuco, 913 East Street, assesses map 102, lot 54. Could you please <coughs> introduce yourself for the record and then the floor is yours. Sure. Uh, Jim Hanley, <laughs> Civil Design Consultants. Um, Dick got tied up, he couldn't make it, but um, these are both, uh, so on your agenda, F and E are both for, uh, or E and F, or F and G, or whatever they might be. Yeah. They're both for 913 <laughs> Main, uh, 913 uh, East Street, um, and uh, we have two current orders of conditions for projects that were permitted over the last few years. There's been no activity on site. Um, the site is in the process of being sold, and therefore this is an encumbrance on the lien, so uh, we're coming to you to ask that you issue the certificate of compliance. Uh, again, nothing has been done on the site, and if anything is to be done, we'll be back in front of you again with yet another order of conditions. So, yeah, you're, just to be clear, um, the property is not being sold with this permit attached Correct. to it. It's yeah. yep. totally different. E exactly. Right. Yep. Um, all right, any discussion from the commission or our agent? One of the special conditions was to remove a paint-like substance. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Was that done? Do you know? Uh, or not did that, that still aware. remain on site? Yeah, not that I'm aware of. I, I, I really only know uh, what I've seen driving by, and it looks like they have done uh, some cleanup of the site. Okay. Um, but I, I can't confirm that that's been done. So I don't think that should hold us back, but I mean, next time this comes up uh, in front of us, I think we should mm -hmm. all try to remember that paint-like uh, paint substance. Um, all right, unless there is further discussion on this agenda item, could I have a motion to approve as discussed at this meeting? I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. All right, and then um, agenda item G, request for certificate of compliance for Richard Cuco, 913 E Street, assessor's map 102, lot 52. Could you please introduce yep. yourself for the uh, record again? Jim Hanley, civil design consultants, and uh, again, we're here to request the certificate of compliance. Uh, no work has been done under it. Um, um, the site as it as it was when we originally filed, but we're looking to get the uh, COC. All right. Um, I'm not sure if there's really any questions to ask, but the commission is free to do so. Um, but not hearing any discussion, could I have a motion to approve? I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Um, agenda item H, this is a public hearing, request for determination of applicability for Joseph uh, Cabernier, 110 Breckenridge Road, assesses map 111, lot 69. Could you please introduce yourself for the record and then take us through what you plan on doing. 
Joseph Charbonnier, uh, here for an RDA for removal of some uh, trees that are within the 100-foot uh, uh, buffer zone, the wetlands buffer zone. Um, and how, um, how many trees are you planning on removing? Um, six, maybe seven. Six, maybe seven, all right. Um, and they're, they're how close to the wetland uh, line? Technically, they're they're within 20 feet of my house, which is <laughs> but the, within the 100 foot. Is, is that fair to say? They're within the 100 foot. Um, <clears throat> most of them, I think. There's like one that's outside of it. Um, they're all within the floodplain, and they're within 200 feet of a river. They're within 200 feet of a river. All right. Um, What's the purpose for removing them? They're um, all about 100 foot pines, yeah. and they're starting to in impede. I've been I've been there for 30 years. Some of them, a lot of them, uh, one of them starting to lean. Uh, four of them are. Um, starting to, the branches are starting to encroach on my roof. Um, and to be honest, the four of them especially, um, maybe I'm getting a little uh, more timid as I get older, but I've been, I've been staring at them for 30 years. And, um, so I, so for that reason, and the branches, and just, just because of the age of the trees, I don't know how long they'll live, but it's, a, I guess you want to call it a precaution, but they, they do impinge on the, uh, on the house itself. And then a couple of others that are, uh, there's one that's, I think it's an oak. Um, it's just, it just starting to grow more and more toward the house. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit of an aesthetic thing, but also just, uh, you know, impinging on or encroaching on the house, I guess. Do you plan on planting any other types of trees in Not the in place? their place, no, just leave the stumps in place. I'm not, right. not doing any grubbing or anything like mm -hmm. a grub, uh, stump removal. All right. Um, Sounds pretty straightforward, um, and you said uh, five or six? Or six, six, maybe seven, six but prob seven. probably seven. All right, so um, we'll definitely approve for eight. Yeah, okay. Let's go with yeah. eight just in case okay. there is another one that I won't argue. during the time. Yeah. Um, um, all right, if there's any further discussion? The only discussion I have, the only problem is when you take one down, the ones behind get weak, and the wind will take the others because they all, you know, if there's any question that more should come down, speak your piece now. Yeah. If I have any concerns? Yeah. If well, the, the, the four major ones that I definitely, those are within 20 feet of the house, and 20 feet beyond them are another whole, I mean, hundreds of, of pine trees. Right. So, um, well, like I say, I, I've taken them down, and, like, you know, when they're all together, they protect each other. Yeah. But when you do take some down, now the others are weak to the wind. So, yeah, it's, it's a safety issue. You know? Yeah, no, I understand. I, I, I would only say to that that, again, there are, besides the ones I'm taking down, there are many others around them. They're just not as close to the house. All right. Because, yeah, it's a, it's a fine balance because Tewksbury is a tree city. Right. Uh, so, like, not trying to just cut down as many trees as we want, but... Uh, like it is a safety issue when they get to um, you know the closer to the house and stuff, uh, but you know that's true that they, the forest protects itself. But right. so if you do notice anything, just you know get in touch with Abigail as soon as possible. If you notice anything, and we can try to figure out if it makes sense to you know do something or remove more trees. Just I, I don't want you to be in that situation where. You know, suddenly there's additional trees that are also intimidating. Yeah, no, understood. I, uh, and, um, I appreciate the comments. Um, all right, if there's no further discussion, um, this is a public hearing. Um, and if anybody in the public would like to uh, get up and m make a comment, now is the time to do so. Not seeing anybody get up, could I have a motion to close the public hearing? I'll make that motion. 
Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, chair votes aye as well. And finally, um, could I have a motion to approve um, the request for a determination of applicability uh, as discussed at this meeting? I'll make this. I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye as well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Before I get to you, um, you, you can sit, uh, you know, I just uh, realized I just asked for a approval. Um, I'm just going to retake that. Could I have a motion for a negative determination of applicability as discussed at this meeting? I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, agenda item I, public hearing, notice of intent, Maureen Herald, 110 Arkansas Road, Assessor's Map 82, Lot 167. Could you please introduce, your, introduce yourself to the record, and then the floor is yours. Sure. Good evening, Maureen Herald, Norse Environmental Services. I'm here on behalf of the applicant. Um, filed a notice of intent with the commission to raise an existing dwelling and garage that's located on the property. We'd like to construct a new single-family dwelling and driveway. Um, the new single-family dwelling is shifting closer to Arkansas Road. Um, we provide erosion controls on the property. The project meets the 25-foot no disturb as well as the 50-foot no build that the commission likes to see. Uh, the BVW is located off-site um, on a paper street called Ruby Way. And I can open it up to the commission with any questions. We did receive a DEP file number. There was no comments posted. All right. So Ruby's Way is a paper street. There's Correct. On there. Right. Yes. Um, and what is the DEP file number? It is 305-1201. Um, any discussion on this notice of intent? Uh, I was just wondering how big is the house that you're going to be putting on there? I can do some quick math for you. It's kind of an interesting shape house, yeah. if you'd like me to. <laughs> Compared to what th is there already, is it? I, I, I can scale it off and give you an approximate if that yeah, works. Just Okay, is let me, it let me, a ton bigger? I'm just wondering how much water is going to be displaced by this. Let me grab my calculator building. because it's late. <laughs> okay, let me get a tiny scale. Twenty-four seventy square feet. So, okay. So it's not huge. <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. And I just want to specify Ruby's Way. 
there is a section of Ruby's Way that is real, but where you abut to it is a paper street. Correct. I yeah. think so no south. So There's the easterly houses. side yeah. of Ruby's Way, it might be paved a portion of it. Mm -hmm. I know I I know it's cleared uh, yeah. dirt wise, but um, I don't where it is behind this yeah. lot, it's it's paper and it's wooded. Yeah, for looking at uh, Google Maps right now, it does show a portion of it. I just want to, you know, get that on the record that Ruby's sure. Way does exist. I don't want to, uh, you know, anybody who lives there <laughs> might not be happy. I say they don't exist. Um, all right. Any other discussion from the commission or our agent? So, in one of. Um Abigail's pictures, am I looking at the right thing? It says there's a lot of significant dumping of yard waste close to the wetland. Right, so between, I would say, around wetland flag 2A, there's a lot of lawn clippings out there. And it's kind of interesting because this property, I just found out from the neighbors that are here, I, it has been vacant for a while, so I'm not sure if it's coming from this property or another property, but... It's a good pile of lawn clippings, grass clippings out there. So, so how was that dealt with? Do we have to deal with that? Well, that area can be kind of wet back there, is it? Uh, before you continue, um, this is a public hearing, um, and if you would like to get up during the public hearing section of it, um, I just ask that you get up and introduce yourself. Okay. It's just the law. <laughs> Um, I had proposed special conditions in this file um, yeah. that included um, just removal of that All right. waste, but that's, you know. Thank you. I think, yeah, I think I'd like to see no dumping signs also. Um, it seems like it's probably yard waste uh, collection site for the neighborhood. And, and I'm not sure where it's coming from. It wasn't obvious to me which property was doing the dumping. I don't think somebody's lived here, per se, for 18 months. Well, that's why I'm thinking. It's probably a community yeah. uh, site visited by the lawnmowers. Are there fences on all sides of the property? I'm looking at one that has um, a fence on the side. But. Oh, gosh. Um, I think the property to the west has a fence. Abby, did the, this property didn't have a fence, did it? <laughs> Not that I recall seeing. I think the, yeah, the property um, past it has a fence that it sort of looks like that property's fenced in. But it's All right. Uh, because, I, I mean, is, are there already people planning to move in here? Is this being built and then sold? I'm not sure what the intent is. Um, I'm just assuming that if, if somebody's going to be living here, um, they're not going to, we can let them know that, you know, lawn clipping shouldn't be placed in the wetlands. And then they're probably going to prevent other people from dumping their lawn clippings, at least on their property. Well, the good news is I think most of the neighborhood is here. Oh. <laughs> so they'll be informed. Mm -hmm. And regarding the home that's on this lot, it's really not inhabitable. In fact, the the door was open and it just oh. reeked of mold mm -hmm. and it's just, it's in really rough shape. Same thing with the garage, it's not inhabitable. Mm -hmm. But I just mean the, the future, you know, occupants will probably not want their neighbors dumping everything on their lawn, if, if, in, if, if in fact that is what's happening, but yeah. uh, I'm not, I don't want to insinuate anything. Right. Um, I mean, we, we could put signs on our property. It just gets a little bit tricky because of the wetlands off of our property. Um, there's a 40 foot right of way. Let me see if it's completely. Is that, is that Ruby? Yes. 40 feet? Yes. Yeah, the 100 foot buffer goes right through the back of the proposed dwelling.
Um, I'm not seeing the proposed order of conditions. My, I don't see it either. The only proposal it was I had proposed standard um, conditions, and then the only additional condition was the removal of the um, the dumped material. All right. Um, so you're familiar with the. Um, erosion controls and stuff. Um, so we'll be issuing that and then again just the removal of the yard waste. Okay. Um, Should I include the no dumping signs? Um, I don't think it's that big of an issue, but I mean, if, if anybody would like to see them, speak now or forever hold your peace. I'd love to see them. All right. Do we want no dumping signs or the Conservation Commission plaques that we have? I don't, I don't think the conservation signs tell you no dumping. No. Obviously, we've got a community dump. If I may make a suggestion, it might make sense to put it in the right of way, just because oh, yeah. the wetland is beyond that and, mm -hmm. and the dumping's in the wetland. All right. I, I agree with right where Ruby is not improved, we place a... Right. Mm -hmm. yep. And then so if a neighbor isn't here tonight that doesn't get notified, let's see the sign. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. All right. Um, it is an odd-shaped uh, <clears throat> proposed dwelling. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, but <laughs> you're allowed to yeah, you make odd shapes. Build what you want, right? Um, I think it was designed for the lot. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, if there's no further discussion right now from the commission, this is a public hearing. Um, if anybody in the public would like to get up and make a comment, I just ask that you introduce yourself uh, for the record name and address. Hi, my name is Rich Pintura. Is this one? Um, I live at 104 Arkansas Road. Um, just stating for the record that we're all very happy, these neighbors, that you know that house is finally coming down and going back up. So my only concern was is that you know the footprint that's going in there is a lot bigger than what's already there, and the area is wet. So I worry about uh, if there's any uh, water mitigation being done. It's because as soon as you put something in the earth, it pushes the water somewhere. So I'm just wondering if there's any accommodations being made to that respect. Would you like to address that? Sure. So there's no proposal on this plan for any type of rooftop infiltration or anything of that nature. Um, stormwater management standards doesn't require it for a single family house lot. Um, the soils are nice and sandy out there. There are Windsor soil. Um, I understand the concern. Um, the soils are pretty good. Yeah, and I've seen neighbors take on water since uh, one of the new houses went in that neighborhood. It just pushes it somewhere. It's got to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I do remember one of our neighbors taking on water after a new house was put in. Um, so I don't know if any accommodations can be made or if anything. I'm just bringing it up because the water's going to wind up going somewhere. The area is wet. Um, just looking at the... I mean, if the commission desires, we could incorporate, like, rooftop infiltration to collect the uh, rainwater from the roof and put it in an infiltrator. Um, most of the house is outside. Most of the proposed yeah. house is outside the 100-foot buffer zone, so we are fairly far away from the wetland itself. Um, I don't think providing rooftop infiltration is a big deal, if, if that's what the commission wants to incorporate. We just have to make sure the house has gutters and run it down to a chamber. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that's a I think that's acceptable, a, a, yeah. Um, it's not, it, again, it's not required for a single family 
um, house, but right. it's... But we want to be considerate of the nation. Yeah. Right. Could right. we make it... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's not just rainwater you're worried about. You're also worried about the wetlands behind. It's, you know, the whole property is, is uh, wet towards the back, and if you're going to sink a hunk of concrete in there, you're pushing the water somewhere. That's uh, the existing water is what I'm talking about. So the house, the closest dimension to the proposed house is about 70 feet away. And which one is that one? Th that's the new house we'd like to build. So the house is going closer to Arkansas Road than the existing house in the garage itself. Uh, so really the only accommodation I could possibly make is incorporate some sort of rooftop infiltration which would pipe the rainwater in, into a chamber underground. Okay, nothing for regular storm water. Well, that's for storm water. I mean, coming from the uh, coming from the wetlands behind. So this is upgrading of the wetlands quite a bit. I, you know, the impervious area for the house is. I I find it reasonable. It's about 24, 2,500 square feet. So it's not going to be a McMansion on the property. It's not a max build out of the property itself. Right. Yeah, it's, um, it's still a good size structure, a lot bigger than what's there. The driveway is completely outside the 100 foot buffer zone. Mm -hmm. So if a, if a water problem becomes a problem down the road um, that hasn't existed for years in that area, is there any um, recourse for the neighbors? Well, that's you're assuming it's coming from this lot. A you, water problem could come from anywhere. It could come from a wetland that's been dammed by a beaver. It, it, could, it could happen. It could be your neighbor putting an addition on. It could be your neighbor putting a massive patio on. Right. So I've been there for close to 40 years and I actually haven't seen anything. I only seen one instance when somebody started taking on water right after a new, a new house was built in that, in that area right down there in Ruby's Way. So it does concern me a little bit being so close that, you know, putting in something that large that, you know, I know that when you put something on the earth, Water's got to go somewhere, and you know the weakest link is the one that's going to going to receive it all. I just wanted to bring it up as a point. Of view. Um, we we appreciate your concerns. Um, mm -hmm. it, it is tough speaking about future issues uh, because it's you know we we have to discuss the wetlands as as they are currently, um, and. The applicant is correct that there's, it's hard to determine exactly where the excess water would be coming from. There's, there's a variety of reasons. Right, I've um, seen retention ponds done to absorb uh, water that's being pushed around and things of that nature. I don't know if that's possible here or not, but I just want to, I have to bring it up. Yeah. I, don't think, I don't think you have the property. Yeah, I think on this size property, there's nowhere, um, that could fit a full-size retention pond. And I think the, the rooftop infiltration would be, um, I, I don't want to say it will definitely be plenty, but it will be more than what is required from, um, from the owner. Okay. You know, this type of thing. Could we possibly do either drip line trench around the foundation or rooftop infiltration into like a dry well or a Caltech chamber? Then that gives my client an option as to kind of what works best for this house. I mean, it essentially does the same um, thing, infiltrate the rainwater. It's an awkward shape. Right, and I, I don't want to, yeah, no, I'm a little it. nervous well, to we say. We understand, we, we do okay. get it, right? So what was the second um, option that you brought up? So you could do a drip line trench, which would eliminate the gutters around the dwelling so the rainwater would fall off the roof and just go right into a trench beside uh -huh. the foundation. Um, but it's the same concept. You're just infiltrating into the groundwater. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm set with that. Um, I think either, either or. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes. And it'll help that we're taking the lawn debris out of the wetland as well, because yeah. that's taking up space. Mm. 
All set. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Um, all right. If there's anybody else from the public who would like to make a comment, now is the time to do so. <laughs> Hi. My name is Thomas Sawyer. I live at 99 Ruby's Way at the edge of their property. And uh, there's a question of about four trees that are in Ruby's Way, the lane itself. That should probably be taken down by the town. Um, One's on the very border of the edge of our properties, and it's part. It's considered the uh, uh, paper so, street. Uh, I'm hesitant to continue this line of discussion because it's not related to this application. Okay. Um, but um, I guess as an aside. Um, if you feel that there are town-owned trees um, that are in danger of coming down, please reach out to uh, the town or um, you know Abigail, and we can figure out uh, like what can be done about that and whose responsibility that is. Okay. After we're done, I can take down your contact information and call you tomorrow. I'm sorry, my hearing. I can take down your contact information after the meeting, and I'll call you tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anybody else from the public before not seeing anybody else rise? Uh, could I have a motion to close the public hearing? I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. And could I have a motion to approve this notice of intent as discussed at the meeting? I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good night. Last item on the agenda before admin reports um, is enforcement order for Bethany McGoldrick, 19 Pont Street. Thank you. Would you introduce yourself for the record? Um, I'm Bethany McGoldrick. And my understanding is that, I'll wait for everybody to clear out. Uh, my understanding is that the fill has been removed? Correct. All right. <clears throat> Abigail, has uh, your site visit went well? Yeah, I conducted a site visit and uh, it looked like there had been you know, fill, the fill removed. Cool. Um, any discussion from the commission? I'm good. We're good. Cool. Um, if, unless you have anything else to add, I'm going to ask for a motion to uh, close out this enforcement order. I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Um, old business, new business, administrators' reports. Um, I vaguely understand what's happening, but Abigail, if you could fill us in on the details for this request. Yeah, so um, this is really similar to agenda item um, E141 Eastgate Road. Um, it's a little bit different. So um, this um, woman called me, um, April Hamilton. Um, her husband's name is Charles. Um, they live at um, 1186 Main Street, um, and they are trying to sell their house. They're hoping to close on October 1st. Um, they, as they were going through that process, the buyer's attorney um, notified them that there was an outstanding order of conditions on their title. Um, we, you know, found the order of conditions. Um, it's for a project at 999 Whipple Road, um, which is the DPW building. Um, it was all typed up. Um, it was issued by Stefania in 2018, um, and it was issued without their name on it. Um, it was then recorded at the Registry of Deeds with their name handwritten in the property owner section. Um, we don't really know how it got there, um, but they are at 1186 Main. They're completely outside of the buffer zone. They have no, um, they've you know done no work, obviously, that would be subject to um, conservation review or regulation. Um, and so you know, we contacted the Register of Deeds at North Middlesex, um, 
Richard Howe, um, and he has requested that the Conservation Commission issue um, an, like an invalid certificate, so issue a certificate stating that the um, a certificate of compliance stating that the original order of conditions is invalid, um, so that it can clear their title, so they can move forward with um, selling their home uh, without this encumbrance. All right, and doesn't make a lot of sense, but yeah. <laughs> that's different. Yeah, I give you yeah, right. that's different. Interesting. Gotta give you that one. Is there any idea how it happened? No, there's no idea how that happened. They haven't done any work. They didn't do any work in 2018. Nothing else had been recorded for them in 2018. Um, the book and page numbers of their other records don't we match. You don't have any idea who hand wrote? No. So I know that Stefania, the in two conservation agents before uh, me, she issued it without their name on it. But we don't know from the time that Stefania issued it to the time that I'm it was recorded. I guess it was registry of deeds. They probably looked at the property and... <laughs> I don't, the, yeah. the map and lot numbers are not similar. That's bizarre. Um, and it's not like don't know. it's written on the side, scribbled down, like somebody's no, taking notes. It's like on the line. The property owner was blank because on a, on a um, order of conditions, it's you only write the property owner if it's different than the applicant. Um, so that it was blank, but someone wrote in um, April and Charles Hamilton. All right. I can't say we never heard this one. <laughs> <laughs> it's a story. Um, so, I am going to request a motion for an invalid um, certificate of compliance for. Okay. You don't uh, want to call it applicant. Order of conditions. It's order of conditions. Order of conditions. Oh, yeah. Um, That's right. Um, an invalid order of conditions. Could I have a motion to that effect? Does that make sense? It's a, yeah, it's a <laughs> certificate of compliance um, stating that the, in, the order was invalid. It's one of the boxes that you can check off. All right. You got that? Stop talking before you forget. <laughs> <laughs> a, a motion to for an invalid certificate of compliance? Yeah. All right. Could I have a motion to that effect? I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye as well. <laughs> um, all right. Um, if there's no more discussion, then the next meeting is uh, September 4th. No. October? October 4th. Um, October 2nd. October 2nd. October 2nd is the next meeting. Um, um, all right. Could I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye as well.